Hi, uh, so I think we can get started. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, so my name is Kate Rennebaum, and I'm a PhD candidate in Harvard's Film and Visual Studies program. Uh, this year I have been a curatorial graduate student intern in the Harvard Art Museum's Department of Academic and Public Programming, which has been kind enough to support this event tonight. Uh, so I particularly want to thank Jessica Martinez and Molly Ryan for their support. Uh, I also want to thank Harvard's Film Study Center for co-sponsoring this event, with special thanks to Cosette Russell, uh, Lucian Casting-Taylor, sorry, Taylor, and uh, Stefan Grabowski, who's also our excellent projectionist tonight. Uh, so finally, further support for this program comes from the Richard L. Menchel Endowment Fund. Uh, so, early in Philippa Cesar's 2017 film Spell Reel, a ghostly moving image of a young man's face floats on the foliage of night-darkened trees in contemporary Guinea-Bissau. Uh, this projected image, we learn, is one of many shot by four young students some 50 years earlier at the request of revolutionary leader Amical Cabral. Uh, the footage dates from the years of Guinea-Bissau's anti-colonial war of independence from Portugal, uh, which dates 1963 to 1974, as well as the years following the war. Housed on deteriorating film reels in Guinea-Bissau's film archive, nearly 60% of this footage was destroyed during the country's 1998 civil war. In 2011, César began working with the two surviving original filmmakers, Flor Gomez and Sana Nanahada, as well uh, as Berlin's Arsenal Institute for Film and Video Art to digitize the remaining footage. Like the image of the young man's face on the foliage, these images, or spell reels, hover over the film we'll watch tonight. Their black and white fragments play over spell reels' current day scenes, uh, asking questions about the relation between past and present, and about what recovering these images, or performing what César has called a cine archaeology, uh, asking questions about what this can do in the current moment. Uh, there'll be a further discussion after the screening, but for now, let me introduce uh, Philippa Cesar. Uh, Cesar is an artist, filmmaker, author, and curator, and she's interested in the fictional aspects of documentary, the porous borders between cinema and its reception, and the politics and poetics inherent to the moving image and imaging technologies. Her work has shown all over the world, with Spell, Spell Reel most recently playing at the 2017 Berlinale, at MoMA in New York, uh, at Cinema de Real in Paris, and currently at the Images Festival in Toronto. So uh, we'll bring up Philippa to say a few short words before the movie starts. I just wanted to thank so much Kate and uh, the Harvard uh, Museum for, for bringing me here. And um, I'm, I mean, we will have the chance to talk afterwards. So I, I just say enjoy the film and let's speak afterwards. Thank you so much. Can you hear us? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, so. Uh, People might have been able to tell this from some of the dates in the film, uh, but this film is a culmination of a many years long project that Philippa has worked on, I believe about six years, right, that this has been, yeah? Maybe from 2011, my, my entrance <laughs> into, the, into the longer history. Um, but yeah, so uh, I just wanted to hear from you how the project came about from your perspective, how you got involved and... Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to say when it started, um, because like one, one thing is like the, all this film history that was there and you know my involvement was uh, very recent and, um, and maybe I can start that I, I, I was curious about, uh, you know, there was a lot of traces that, that were in my, around my life that were leading to Guinea-Bissau. And one of them was actually the San Soleil's film, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Chris Marcus film, uh, that was happening between Japan and, and Guinea-Bissau. And the other thing was my father's being involved in, the, in that war, like most of the parents uh, of my generation, and either they deserted or they landed in the, in the colonial war. So um, it's a kind of com common biography. Um, and uh, so there was many, many issues, but I think cinema was like maybe the, the, the thing that brought me there. Um, 
and 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 when I finally uh, interviewed uh, Flora Gomez, Sananada, Suleiman Bi, and many other people connected with film and and literature in in Bissau, they I mean at some points uh, I think it was even Suleiman that showed me the room full of films, um, a very smelly room. And uh, and I was wondering like what's going to happen to these films and um, yeah and they were like oh we don't know what to do and there was different <coughs> attempts but um, and then uh, the first thing I did was um, taking the picture I took to to the Cinematheque in Lisbon in 2011 but unfortunately it was also like the the moment of the of the financial crisis. And uh, and the Cinematheque was also having problems, and they also knew they they knew about that archive and thought it was not a very re relevant archive because um, most of the films were uh, just foreign films and fragments, so it was not the re like a, a, an archive that you really should have, like like a film archive that that has the 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 like the content then that would be very interesting for them. So. Basically, that was the situation. So I understood, um, and also I knew that FIAF, like the, the Federation of Film Archives, okay. the National Film Archives, um, I don't know how the, uh, to exactly the name, but um, so basically they, they also knew about it and were not doing anything. So I think my involvement happened because by, there was a kind of a, a lack of a synchronization because at that time uh, the Arsenal uh, Film Institute was starting 2011 a project called the, 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 the um, Living Archive project, where they were actually, you know, uh, starting to invite artists, filmmakers, thinkers to reflect about what is an archive. And uh, in that context, um, my project through friends that were involved in that in that uh, group. Um, was mentioned, and then I, 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 yeah, and so suddenly, yeah, there was a lot of forces to re reflect about what to do. So yeah. it started like that. Yeah, um, and uh, and then over the course of the six years, I think you guys had you actually brought the reels from Guinea Bissau to Berlin to do the digitization. Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, yeah. basically, what happened first is that. Um, uh, we, I mean, I went, I, there was this, you know, this is one of the things, one lab in Munich prepared a small, I mean, people I knew from a lab in, in Ari in Munich, they made a small machine mm. where I, that I could, like something really small that I could take to Bissau and just like take frames, like like a, with a microscopic camera and make frames of the of the reels just to, prove the content. I mean, basically, we had to prove to the funders that yeah. there was something worth to be saved there. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I made a kind of a report out of that, of that of like the frames that we, and we've, we finally discovered really like the return of the Milka Cabral. That was the film that was lost, actually. It was like the big, the big kind of like treasure that we, we found. And then there was all these like footage from all these films that they, they were planning to do. Yeah. And then, uh, with this report I did, we, we were able to get some little funding from the Foreign Affairs Ministerium and uh, start a kind of experimental digitalization of the of the archive. That was very was a lot of fun, but very like very kind of like really guerrilla digitalization because the material was in such a bad shape that normally either you trash it or you need millions to you know fix it, yeah. fix it frame by frame. So. The, f the funny thing is that this friend of Arun Faroki, um, Raina Meyer, that, like Arun put me in contact with them because Raina Meyer was actually is an engineering and he was like developing a machine, like a prototype how to digitize <coughs> a material that was in very bad shape. So he was like, I mean, I, sh I say this because I think it's interesting. The 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 the, the, the Digitalization was not depending on the on the perforation mm -hmm. and the, the size of the film, but actually only the with, there was a laser that detects the perforation and takes a picture. So it doesn't matter if the perforation moves and if yeah. the film is not in good shape. So it, we were able to, to transform this almost trash into you know footage, even if they look like that, as you saw. Yeah. Um, 
that, there's so many things we could ask about this film. I'll ask one more question and then we'll pass it over to the audience. Um, I think maybe a, a first question, obvious question is, I just wanted to hear a little bit more about the thinking behind the kind of overlaying of the images of sort of designing this kind of tension between the past images, the present images. I mean, were these echoes across the kind of content? Were these presenting themselves to you as you were filming or were you kind of searching for these echoes? Or I just want to hear what you're thinking there. Yeah. I mean, what happened was that um, basically that we started the archive project parallel. I mean, we were always bringing the filmmakers to, I mean, the filmmakers will rep rep like Suleiman B.I. that was not shooting, but was working always with this filmmaker. So we were like always bringing people over with the films. And so that, that uh, the process was very close to the filmmakers. And, and one of the things that we did was like, we didn't know what, one thing that we were sure, everybody was sure, that was didn't want to close the material again, like mm. like digitize and bring it back to archives. Yeah. But we were also not forcing the filmmakers to finish the films. I mean, nobody want. I mean, they didn't want to film finish the films that they never finished. Yeah. So it was like about what to do, and like so we wanted to keep it quite experimental. So, mm. but even with a lot of questions. So we basically what we did was using the the cinema space as like as a. a, a, a like a, a place to work and to reflect. So yeah. we were able to use the arsenal over many uh, days, um, like watching the footage with the film, with Sana, with Suleiman, with the Flora, and just discussing them. And basically they had the microphone and they were just looking at them. We took out the, the process of, you know, the editing process where you were looking at footage and reflecting. Yeah. We took it inside of the cinema. And, um, and, and we just recorded, documented all this, all this stuff uh, over, uh, over a period of time. And then on the end, um, there was this question that we were, I was always uh, struggling with, like actually this footage, exactly what we're doing here in Berlin has to be done. In, in, in Bissau and in, yeah. in, in, in Guinea with the people. Um, and so this, this idea started to, to, to flourish, and, um, but you know, we didn't have funding and it was very difficult to pay all these things. And, mm -hmm. and one, one of the ideas that I had was actually to, to apply for, for film funding. So that's what happened. I mean, mm -hmm. we, I got a, a film funding to go around with the footage. Ah, and to do the itinerant cinema. The itinerant ah. cin cinema. Uh, and basically, we were focusing most on that than and then basically shooting a film. So the what I can say is that basically the the whole process of like the years of discussing and collecting all this material was you know it took ages and was uh, yeah it was not really folk I mean we, we had, film, I, yeah. I knew I knew myself that I had the depth like in the end I have to deliver a film <laughs> so but I was not so much focused on, the, on that even if I had like these wonderful people around me like shooting like Jenny the documenting and other people um, so in the end I had like these hours and you know hundreds of hours of material and uh, and I had to deliver the you know pay my debt uh, even if I was really happy about like the wonderful things we did like and through all these before. years, so um, so basically the, the the I arrived to because that, that's why I always put you know it's difficult to to look at me with this poster where I say director Philippa Cesar you know like has it is rendered in institutions because yeah. actually I always see this as a, as a collective yeah. I didn't direct anything yeah. what I did is assembling. Yeah. And that's you know the way I assemble things and edit them, and this is my uh, responsibility. But yeah. I didn't direct the rest, so it's complicated to you know these um, this, uh, these um, roles are named. Yeah. So I mean, one of just to very fast to go to the form of the film. Maybe I it was very complicated to come, and for me it was difficult to to arrive to this uh, shape because like I had so many material, and one of the things that I didn't really wanted to own the footage, you mm. know, like by uh, amplifying them in the old screen. So I kind yeah. of wanted to keep them in this kind of like box, yeah. uh, block as if you're looking also at the edit in an editing suite. Mm. And and the other thing is that. I wanted to see the material, the film, like materialized in space, you know, and also materialized uh, in these moments of when it becomes something else, when it becomes light, you know, projected on, on surfaces yeah. and and kind of activated. So I think it was this um, uh, was a little bit this, you know, how to arrive to this shape. So there's this like layering. Yeah. yeah. 
I know it's a fascinating. Um, I think we have time for uh, at least one question. We'll see how long it is. So maybe we could go to the audience and see. Uh, we have a microphone moving around. So if anybody has a question, we can ask. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Philippa. Uh, this was, I think, my favorite film seeing uh, last year at, at the Flaherty. Oh. And um, I really wanted to see it again because I was writing so much the, the first time. Um, so I appreciate the form. Um, but my question is, is being that you have all of these uh, breadcrumbs of all of these miniature stories in the film, what other films did you get the idea to make or other threads that you want to follow while you were making this film? Um, he's saying sort of what, what uh, other threads or ideas or projects came out of this, this film and this project. Uh, right, uh, I think, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, many. I mean, basically, I, I was completely, I, I think I, I was very transformed by this process. Uh, um, kind of like, it, um, I, I can't, you know, like, I think many people were transformed, but like, each one in different ways and because you know in this collective space you know um, each person had his own like as I mean you met Sana like if you were in the Flarty you know like he was there last year and you know so each each, um, each <coughs> participant had his own situation and like position and interest and and for me was uh, um, was very I mean um, I, I mean one thing that I I mean, there's, for example, for example, the Flarty was also a moment where what happened in the, that Flarty last year made Sana come to me and said, "I have a mission for the next project." So basically, he came to me already defined what's going, and we are working on that like hell. Like we had just like delivered a huge application last week because he just came to me and said, "Like okay, next next mission." And so, like you see, like how we are like in what kind of like uh, he you know he has this kind of he has this militant, you know, like, he's still there, you know, like, but in a very up-to-date form. So he is always up-to-date in a way, he's like, knowing what you have to do, because now, like, you have all these um, uh, threats of, um, uh, ex like, ex extractivism, like, uh, I don't even say neocolonialism, it's like liberal, <coughs> liberal colonialism, you know, financial colonialism that is happening there in crazy ways and like there's these 88 islands in front of the um, of Guinea Bissau you know the Bijagos islands that are going to be there's, there's going to be like um, they are building pa platforms for oil extraction in the shores um, they they are preparing for creating a, a free like taking over an island one enterprise and making a free zone like a kind of an emirate mm -hmm. uh, like a a German company, actually. So, I mean, there's amazing things going on. Tourism that is like you don't see it in any other place. In, I mean, like, it's incredible, like violent. Uh, um, and and basically, he, Sana was like spending all uh, summer giving me arguments why I should like it should be the next mission and to to create a kind of a film center where the Bijagos can make their own evidence, like their own like digital uh, evidence of their lives, because basically they are being you know erased by you know CGI animations of what's going to happen there in the, f in the near future. So um, th this is just for you to to know to understand what kind of like how our like our dynamics are working in the sense like that that this experience was also very much about um, you know testing uh, tools from the past that maybe they are very um, useful for today or you just have to rethink them how to you know and because because um, you know film film or Im moving image is being used um, in the other direction you know, it's also to you know like when I was talking about these CGI animations that are being done to render you know these islands these high tech you know islands it's also a way of uh, using image to erase lives you know basically to, to, to because uh, you put them these images on the platform and then they like there's nothing there is a terra nullius <coughs> we can go on and extract whatever so I mean this is this is yeah, one th one thing that is going to ha is happening now, but at the same time, 
I learned so much, and I, I, I was so much tra transformed um, about you know the way, yeah, so in so many ways. I mean, I, I tried to put in some of the like commands that I put in the film, you know, like how, for example, to give the, how, for example, Sana was always like re-negotiating uh, my own identity, you know, as whenever it would be necessary, you know, like, and I liked that a lot because like. That's the violence, you know, we are in the system of violence, like, or, you know, like, and uh, for example, I'm, my body in that context, it, it's also the signifier of violence, you know, like, I'm, you know, with my language, with my color, you know, and, um, and I'll, so I learned a lot about dealing with the situation because Sana was like, no, but now we have, to, actually, you, here you can't be the Portuguese, you have to be the German from the arsenal, you know, like, so he would just negotiate that, but also like, the subversion of that, uh, it's also like revealing, you know, the violent system of all this, you know, or, or how, I mean, the system we are all in, you know, like the violent system of racialization and uh, gendering people and, 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 how, and utilizing it. So I, I, I thought it was very interesting how he would kind of like subvert it, you know, reverse it maybe in different moments when it when it was needed for us to go on collaborating in a certain place but but what i like a lot to work with sana is that it's possible to have always conflicts going up and without hiding them we just like <coughs> convoke them and like deal with them and this was uh for me very I mean, very inviting to, you know, to provoke other people to also deal. I mean, we have to deal with this. You know, the, the system is like that, but we don't have to agree with it. We just, we can't say like, it, well, there is not, you know, but we, we don't have to agree with it. So, and that, that's, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful process. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we have time for a question. Yeah. I, I just to oh, sorry, well, maybe just wait for the microphone for Molly. I also forgot. <laughs> I just wanted to follow up on that because it brings up um, so many things that I was sort of imagining throughout and then even more so as you're talking about your conversations with Sana. In, in terms of how these interactions um, really played themselves out with especially Flora Gomez and Sana, who are, who, you know, who were, who were the remaining um, filmmakers from this time and, and there's this footage in which you've re-engaged them with a kind of a, a documentary style which is different than everything they've done since then, right? Oh. They are known for their feature films, and then, and especially Flora. I mean, Sana much much less so, but it's always been in there. So there's this kind of interesting turn that that they've come to in engagement with you that brings them, and even in thinking about your, you know, what Sana is saying, the next project, let's do something in the Bija Ghost that's really looking at what's happening in real time there. And and yeah. I wonder if you've reflected on why it is that that immediately post-1980, they both turned to feature and they turned to, to fictionalized forms of this that were still, you know, bringing out some of the experiences of what was happening in Guinea-Bissau, but in a, in a feature form and why you think they didn't continue the kind of revolutionary work of, document, of, of the, the kind of documentation that Cabral almost mandated mm. <laughs> in his own time. I mean, I think they did uh, continue I mean, I think the films that that both did uh, fiction films, they are, you know, there's something, you know, there's something po very political and militant. Uh, but, uh, the thing, but they are fiction films, and I, I think, I mean, I, I'm going to say something that maybe they would be angry at me if they would hear, but I think they almost, I mean, Sana not so much, but Flora maybe it didn't wanted to know so much about this. It didn't, sh it didn't share it. Mm. You know, if you look at the interviews of Flora Gomez, he doesn't talk about this. And, and I think because, I mean, it was such a brutal cut, you know, the 1980 coup d'etat was so brutal and it was also very racialized, you know, like um, there's like two figures that appear in the films like that were like the mixed race people, like they, they were the first to be killed, you know, like in 1980. So it was such a brutal like um, re-instrumentalization and, and re-traumatizing of, you know, like of of, of the whole thing, you know, and and I think they just, you know, they said like, okay, this is this is the cut, you know, like we have to do something else. But they wanted, to, they, it's what they knew. They only knew to be filmmakers, and that's what they wanted to do. So, um, but they didn't want it to be um, propaganda filmmakers anymore, because that thing was over, mm -hmm. and the PAJC that that uh, that uh, you know, like 
that went on in 1980, it's not the same than from before. So I think they were very, very coherent, even if they um, they are very proud of this time, but they, there was no, there was not the same political situation to go on doing these films. So they they were able to find a totally new language to go on being filmmakers and being political filmmakers, I think. But they, I think there, there's really a trauma of not wanting to go to this history. And it also took me a while to also to bring Flora to get involved because it was like, oh, the archive, you know, this kind of trauma. And like, but at some point, like, you understood that that there was another space that could be created in in there, and then and then and then he got more involved. What's the end? That's a really good question. Um, well, I think we we should wrap it up. But thank you so much for coming out tonight, and thank you so much to Philippa for great answers. Thank you.